Less is more for Christmas decor. Hello, I'm Anita Joyce here with Kelly Wilkness, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks, episode 386, Christmas Light, Do It Right. And we are all about not putting a lot of effort into decorating (laughs) for Christmas, if you haven't noticed that before. So, uh, you know, there are ways definitely to do it where it looks beautiful, but you don't lose two two weeks of your life doing it. Exactly. Don't think us that we're Grinches because we're so not. We love the holidays. We savor this time with our friends and family and pets and everything. And we love our house to look beautiful all the time, particularly around the holidays. But gone are the days of the dragging the bins out and staying up late at night and hanging up every single ornament and just, you know, chucking stuff all over the place. (laughs) Well, and I don't think of this as the Grinchy approach. And I'm wondering if what caused the Grinch to be such a Grinch was he got tired of doing the -the over-the-top decorating every year. (laughs) You know, that can make you pretty cranky about that the, deck- can the sort holidays. That can you cranky. And, you know, a lot of people do get cranky about it. So why do that? If you, and again, as we always say, everyone, if you love it and setting up your 1200 house Christmas uh-huh. village, mm-hmm. complete with ice skating rink and waterfalls, and is your thing then go for it and invite us over. We'd love to see it. Mm -hmm. But if it's not your thing and if you're more like we've sort of become, I think Anita's been more like this throughout her life. (laughs) Am I right? You never went crazy over the top seasonal. I have to say I did. Yeah, but the thing is, I like to savor the holidays. I like to enjoy them. And spending days and days doing that, I don't enjoy. So that's kind of why I've chosen not to spend a lot of time doing that. But for some people, they love it. And if you love it, then then I think that's part of the fun. But if mm-hmm. you don't, you know what? It's okay. You don't have to do all of that work if you don't want to. Well, that's the thing because a lot of people, whether when they don't enjoy it, they still feel like they have to do it. They have to do it for their family. And, you know, probably your family doesn't care. And, or they have to do it for somebody else. Or, you know what? They just have to do it because they have all this stuff and they're just going <laughs> to yeah. bring it out because this is the time of the year you bring it out. Oh, my friend had the whole village. I, I think it took her poor husband a month to set it up. Oh, my mom has a village. She even had risers made for her village. Mm-hmm. Yes. And there were specific houses that she and her sisters collected and they were not, you know, they felt their village was better than the other kinds of villages. <laughs> and there was all <laughs> kinds of stuff Well, going the on. worst part was she was the one that wanted it, not her husband, but it was his job to do it. So imagine that if that's your job to spend hours setting something up that you don't really you don't care about. Like. Wow. Yeah, I know. Well, she did Christmas right. She did it the way she wanted, but she made him do it. (laughs) It was light for her. Let's put it that way. Exactly. It was light for her. So anyway, what we're suggesting is just if you want to, free yourself of the burden of the bins. You don't have to do it all. And there are ways to approach Christmas decorating where uh, it it isn't a lot of effort. You actually enjoy Mm it. Um, The decorations can then go on into the rest of the winter. And um, you can actually you know, maybe put your feet up and and enjoy what you've created rather than, you know, being sort of wrapped in tinsel Mm -hmm. and exhausted and just falling in a crumple at the bottom of the tree. Well, and my family doesn't mind helping me with the tree, but after that's done, you know, they're not really interested in doing anything else. So that's kind of part of it too. And, you know, I think for me too, my mom was not, you know, that was just, she did not, she, you know, certain people are really into making everything feel special. And that's like the opposite of my mom. My mom was just like, (laughs) It's like, I mean, I told you one time we were there for Thanksgiving and she didn't even, uh, she was serving everything out of the pots and pans. (laughs) And and she spawned a dish lover. (laughs) And I was like. Multiple pattern dish lover. Yes, yes, yes. I know. But you know what? It's not important to her. So I get that. No criticism of her. But, you know, for me, I've thought at least I don't care that it's fine china, but just put it in a bowl. You know? Yeah. Your mom wrote the book on Christmas light. <laughs> yes, she did. Okay. But we're doing not only Christmas light, but we're, we're doing it some right. Effort. 
Yes, exactly. There you go. Yes. So we ha- we have some thoughts on how we would approach or how we do approach our Christmas decor. Um, so Anita, if you want to kick it off and then I'll chime in with my thoughts as well. Well, I think what you want to think about are your focal points. So the places that people are going to be looking You want there to be certain things in those places. And it's amazing where if you have uh, your decor, your Christmas things spaced in the places people are looking, then they kind of get this feeling of you having done more than you've done. And I've noticed that with my French decor. I remember when I only had two French things in my entire house, but they were in very prominent places. And people would talk about my house being French. So I think you could do the, oh, I think you can create that, that same thing with the French, with the, uh, excuse me, with the Christmas decor. I think you're absolutely right. Yeah. So I think well, the place to start is with a wreath on the door. So I know we talk about, you know, bang for your buck. So here you want, you want the most, uh, you want the most feeling of Christmas in your house with the least effort is really what we're talking about. So one thing is, I think, to put the Christmas decor in the key places that people are looking for. it. But then the other piece is, think about what's going to take you a lot of time. And some some very time-consuming things, those are the things that you're going to try to avoid if you can. But ex- you know, with the exception, I would say of the tree, because I think really people are expecting a tree. If you don't have a tree, it's going to feel like you didn't really decorate for Christmas. So I think definitely... You want that tree there, but I would definitely start with that wreath on the front door. That really sets the tone, and they're going to get that sense of Christmas before they even walk in the door. I so agree. So uh, my thoughts are right in line with yours. You have to have these sort of hot spots. Uh, I also have sort of hot spots of regular decor around my house where I'll set up vignettes and whatnot. So you have. I would approach Christmas decorating uh, room by room. So what rooms are important? You know, like, I'm totally blown away by all the things I'm seeing already uh, from blogs and particularly on Instagram. And people have Christmas trees up in their bedrooms already. They're mm-hmm. everywhere. Like, you know, I mean, that's Or there are pictures from last year. Or there might be pictures from last year. That's so true. Um, but, you know, I, do you need to do that? I mean, I felt for years like I mm-hmm. was lacking somehow as a as a blogger or as a human because I didn't have a Christmas tree in my bedroom. Oh, like, wow. You I've really come thing. a long way. <laughs> so, you know, anybody that's on the road to Christmas light, doing it right, you know, I am traveling that road just a few steps ahead of you mm-hmm. because um, if you look at my Christmas porch of only a few years ago, the first year we moved to this house, oh my goodness, I don't think I could fit one more thing on the porch. So mm-hmm. I've come a long way. I I've seen the light, so to speak, and Uh the last couple of years, last year was really the year I did it the way I wanted to. And Mm -hmm. and I loved it. I have a YouTube video. You can see it's not over the top. It's totally doable. It's doable in in one Saturday, not four weekends. I was just reading somebody's Instagram post, and she's got a beautiful home, and, and it's always decorated beautifully, but she's like, three weeks in. And I still have the mantle to go. <laughs> oh, like, my oh, goodness. My gosh. Like, no, I don't want to live like that. And then here's the thing. I don't even want to say this, but then you have to take it all down. Oh, don't even go there. Oh, right? I know. So I think know. about that. So when you're considering, if you're teetering with Christmas light, think about when you have to take it down. So I would do And very- it's no fun. That's the no oh, fun it's part. it's so no fun. Everybody's back at school and it, maybe it's snowing or it's sleeting or it's just a cruddy day. And you, then you've got to schlep all this stuff. It's just depressing. It's and depressing. so the more you put out, the more you've got to put up. Yes, yes. Um, and, you know, it doesn't leave a lot of times for the other holiday things because we are mm-hmm. all busy. You know, maybe you you're, you like to bake. Maybe you want to make a new recipe for uh, the holiday meal. Maybe you want to create some handmade gifts for friends or family. Maybe you just want to take the entire weekend to decorate your tree and do it slowly and have everybody participate that, you know, comes through the living room, which is when mm-hmm. I usually grab people. Come on, put a few things on. Um, so I would approach it room by room um, and find these hot spots. So I agree with Anita. If you're you're going to do something outside. A wreath is a great idea. I don't hang a wreath because the way my doors are configured. So maybe you do um, 
a container plant, uh, a pot. And even if you're living where it's super, super cold, you can put a small living tree in there. Obviously, Mm -hmm. pine trees like to be where it's cold. Um, Or you could put some branches in there, a few cyclamen. They like when it's cold too, particularly if it's a protected area. So something like a container garden, like a wreath, something at your front door that's going to greet people. And exactly as Anita said, sort of like set the tone for what's going on inside. Then I would do something in your entry. I would Mm -hmm. do something on your dining room table. If you have a mantle, a fireplace, maybe you're going to do some touches there. And then you're going to have a tree most likely, but you know what? It's really okay if you don't have a tree, if that's, sure. you know, maybe you're traveling or maybe your kids are all grown or maybe you just had a baby and you're like, oh, wow, I don't have the effort, the time and effort to put up a whole tree. Maybe you get a little tabletop tree or maybe you just do some lovely decorations on your coffee table. So those would be some great areas in the public spaces that you can really do a lovely vignette or pull out more of the stops for with your Christmas decor. And then there are other ways just to add touches that don't that take less than 10 minutes through the rest of your house if you want to. The tabletop tree, I think you're really on to something. There are some faux tabletop trees that are beautiful and you could get a real one. But here's another idea that I've seen beautifully done is just the bare Christmas tree where it really doesn't have ornaments where you can just Mm. string lights on it. Right. And that's it. And that's really a beautiful bare look. It's kind of a minimalistic look, but it's really stunning in its simplicity. So you really don't have to get all the ornaments out. You're so right. And even those uh, trees that are very sparse, you know, what we would have called the Charlie Brown type Mm -hmm. of tree, you know, they're definitely popular again. And even those are just so charming. And I have a tinsel tree that's like that, where it just has the pole and you stick in the few branches. Maybe there's 10 branches in the whole thing. And I don't even put anything on it. Sometimes I would put one ornament on it, right? Really, you know, sort of um, channeling Charlie Brown. So darling, Uh, um, an Instagram account to look at if you're interested in doing this very simple decor, of course, there's lots of whites. It's called Dreamy Whites. Uh, Dreamy Whites, I think maybe Dreamy Whites Lifestyle. Just a beautiful blog, which she doesn't blog very often, but the Instagram is lovely. And then if you're on Instagram looking at that, you could juxtapose it with some of the other people that are doing beautiful, beautiful things, Mm -hmm. but they look like they're decorating, you know, Macy's. Like, you know, I don't really want to live in my house like that. So you can look at the two two extremes. There's plenty of extremes on Instagram, but check out uh, Dreamy Whites and you'll see what we're talking about. Sometimes she just has like... uh, a chunky throw wrapped around the bottom of a, a beautiful evergreen. And that's it. Wow. Yeah. And so another thing you can do, uh, rather than going to all this detail into these vignettes all over your house, you can just grab a couple of lanterns or a couple of cloches and just fill them with some Christmas ornaments and maybe tuck in some greenery. So simple, not a lot of work. Uh, and then for your mantle, You know, if you have some greenery in the the faux greenery in your, you know, in your storage that you can set out, that's fine. Or if you want to do the real, uh, you can go where they sell the Christmas trees. Usually there's some broken branches in the boxes um, that have fallen off of the real trees. You can tuck that in on your mantle. Uh, And again, really just some greenery on your mantle, I think is great. And you really don't need to do anything else. You can put other things on there if you want to or not. Uh, So there's really a lot you can do. This is so simple. Uh, The fairy lights, just stringing them around. Um, Let's see, what else? Um, Just some little simple things like Christmas lights in different places, Mm -hmm. ribbons. And another thing is to go ahead and wrap your Christmas presents and put them out early because that looks so pretty under the tree. I think that's a great way to really make it look like you know, so beautifully done, like a department store, but you were going to wrap them anyway. But yes, why not? I mean, and I'm talking to myself because I'm doing them the <laughs> night before. So I'm trying, I'm trying to talk myself into doing them earlier. <laughs> no, and it is fun. I love wrapping presents. When I was little, that was my mom taught me how to do the curly ribbon, you know, really early on. And I loved anytime she had a gift to give someone, I always wanted to be the wrapper. I, I actually wanted to Aww. be a, you know, they used to have the wrapping paper like area in the department stores. Do you remember that? I well, remember being actually, super I were little. Oh, stop. I worked at a department store when I was 
was in oh, high wow. school and I wrapped pre- and they taught me how to do it professionally. And I love doing the, I love wrapping the gifts. Oh, wow. I always wanted that job. <laughs> I thought that was the best job ever. I know. I um, know. I, yeah. Here's another thought is how about just continuing with your normal palette that you have, not trying to change your whole house over to red and green. Um, or maybe you add a pop of a color, you know, a, a traditional Christmas color, but you could also add a pop of a color that's really non-traditional or go with some non-traditional Christmas colors. I think we did a whole episode on non-traditional mm-hmm, Christmas mm-hmm. colors last year. Um, and because if you say you have a whole neutral palette and then maybe you just add in a red or a green or something like that, that's going to, in just little tiny pops throughout your house, really make a statement for the holidays. And you don't have to redo everything. Here's another idea, and I do this every year because I have the Spode Christmas plates. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you do. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, so if you have Christmas dishes, you get them out early, and I think just leave them stacked up in your kitchen somewhere so you can enjoy seeing them sitting out. Mm-hmm. And then for every meal, you put them on your table. So then that brings Christmas to your table. And guess what? You were going to set the table with dishes anyway. Why not be using your Christmas dishes? And it just really adds that festive feeling to your house, to your table. If you've got a dining room table that you're not using, just go ahead and set it up with the dishes so it looks like you're ready for a party. And it'll be fun for your whole family just walking in there. And they're going to be saying, you know, hey, let's eat in here because it looks yeah, so ready Yeah, yeah, right. Why don't we ever use this room? Right. Exactly. Yes, yeah. So my family actually told me, because we're recording this in November, uh, to go ahead and get out the Christmas dishes. I have already been cleared oh, to pull wow. them down mm-hmm, and put them into circulation. But I've already thought, you know what? I think I'm going to do more of kind of an artistic kind of stacking of them and leave them sitting out this year. So we can oh, kind of- just look like you're casually at the ready at any moment. Well, yeah, because and then just pull from that stack every, right. every meal. Sure. Right. I love it. So there, it's decor and it's mm-hmm. useful. Perfect. Okay. So I found, now I talked about the, um, the outside of your house, just right outside the door. How about you come into the entry? I have some ideas for there. I always like to have a tray on the table that I have in my entry. So if you're able to have a tray, uh, first you have to have a table, I guess. So if you're able to have a room for a table, put a tray on it. Maybe that's where you put a candle. Um, how about a stack of red spined books? And you can just Put a pine cone on top of it. Mm-hmm. You know, put yeah. a, a Christmas ornament. And uh, if it's a round Christmas ornament, they they usually can stay in place. You could put a tiny little bit of um, painter's tape under it and just make it sit right there. It's so pretty. It's so simple. I mean, it doesn't take much time at all. Anita's idea with the cloche, fabulous. Maybe put a sprig of holly underneath it with a little ornament, maybe a um, a little stand-up ornament that you would normally put on the tree, you could tuck under there with with some greens. Really simple. The whole thing can be pulled together in literally 10 minutes. And um, last year, I put by the door uh, vintage Christmas cards that I had obviously very easy to store. You don't, they don't take up much room. I love that. And I stood them up in little flower frogs, you know, the pokey little vintage oh, flower yeah. frogs. Great so idea. That was fun. And then I got to see them because normally, you know, that's the sort of thing that you may look at it, but you're not really incorporating into your decor. So I really liked the way that looked. Do do anything in the entry? Uh, well, I don't have any furniture in my entry, right. so I don't have the, the table you talked about. Right. Some people you don't, don't have. I don't have that. Right. So right. I don't, I can't really put anything. It's really just a hallway. Right. But I was going to say bottle brush trees of various sizes. You know what? These are so classic and I don't really think they ever go out of style. So if you get an assortment of those, I think they're great and you can just put them anywhere. You don't have to think about it. Just set them up varying heights, varying sizes, and just get them out you know, every year. Yeah. And I think they look charming. great. Yeah. Even though, I mean, there's a lot of great reproductions and because sometimes you get the older ones and a little squanched, but. Oh, I mean, new ones. Yeah. I mean, they're available all over the place. Oh yeah. They really are. I mean, they came back sort of strong a few years ago and they, so you can definitely find them and they're really inexpensive. Okay. So I'm going to now walk into the dining room. So here's a couple of ideas for there. I usually have a runner on my dining room table and it's usually a green sack. I just like that as a layering uh, runner. Most of the time it's there by itself with candles and then whatever I have in the center. So at holiday time, I'll leave that same runner and then I'll buy a yard or two of fabric, very inexpensive fabric. 
particularly if I'm doing a color that's not normally my palette. So if I wanted to do, say, something red, maybe red plaids or a dark green plaid or something like that, I would just get a couple of yards of it and I would um, cut it and sort of fold it. So I would kind of make a runner without sewing. And then I've kind of like roused it, like just kind of scrunched it up where it's kind of folded and it's layered on top of the grain sack runner. So if you could imagine that it kind of has more of a 3D feel and it, and then it, it has these little folds in it. So in the folds, you can place a pine cone. So maybe you have like six pine cones, three on one side, three on the other. And then what you have whatever's going on in the center of the table, which can be as simple as a pot of cyclamen or an amaryllis bulb that's blooming, or it's just some greens you cut from the garden. And that's so simple. So it's a couple of yards of fabric and a few pine cones that you might have, or ones that you can buy or find on the ground and some greenery or a plant. Mm -hmm. And, and that says so much in your dining room. Well, speaking of the bottle brush trees, here's another idea. If you have the bottle brush brush trees is to get some very large apothecary glass jars. And these are jars that have a lid at the top. Uh, You need a wide mouth jar for these. And I'm talking about very large and you can get vintage or new. But if you get those and fill it with the fake snow or I think we did Epsom salts. I'm trying to remember what I used for Mm -hmm. mine. But I think I used Epsom salts. And then just put your bottle brush trees in there. It kind of makes this fake snow globe. Oh, I love it. And they're so charming. And the large apothecary, I've seen them done in ball glass jars. But if you used a large apothecary jar, it would make even a bigger statement. And they're really pretty fast to put together if you have just a few minutes. Oh, I love that idea. And then when January rolls around, you can just pour the Epsom salts into your tub and <laughs> Exactly. And then you don't have to store them. Mm -hmm. Um, Another idea for the center of your dining room table is um, a trio of pitchers or vases. So I've used silver pitchers. I've used white pitchers in the past. So a trio of differing heights, and then you fill them with, again, you could use red roses to bring in the red, or you could use white roses, whatever colors that you like. Um, I've used red roses, freesia, and then some berries and greens. And then you make oh, arrangements in each one of them. You know, so maybe the bigger one obviously is going to have more roses. And then, you know, they all have a little bit of of each one of the types of florals or greens that you're using. And you can cluster them together on your dining room table, which looks lovely and makes a real wow presence because there's three of them. But then here's what you can do. If you're having a meal and you need it to have a lower centerpiece, then you take off the tall one and maybe you put that on your coffee table or you put it on a sideboard. So you can move it around as the needs change throughout the holiday season. So if it's just a table where no one's sitting at it, you can have all three of them. If you want to break them apart, then you can move them all around the house. So you've now created one centerpiece really, but it has it's very versatile. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Another thing you can do uh, that's super simple is, and one thing I've done year to year is just buy new ribbon for that year. And I would change it up and go totally different with different colors and then kind of make bows that I would put around my house. Uh, and in one place that you can put them that people really notice is to kind of put a bow on the back of each chair, just make a big bow. And that's such a beautiful presentation, especially if you're having guests for dinner and it just really looks pretty. That, that does really look pretty. I haven't done that. I've thought of in the um, doing some uh, little wreaths maybe hanging from the back. Um, oh, but that's I, beautiful. I love that look. Yeah, I haven't done that yet, but I think that someday I might do that. Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today. And let them know your friends at DTT sent you. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. 
Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. So I'm now in my living room at uh, my, sitting at my sofa looking at my coffee table. What I'm going to probably put there is a low bowl uh, filled with ornaments, uh, really special ornaments that you can appreciate sitting sort of up close to them. Uh, and maybe I'll have a stack of my decor books that I always have around. Uh, and maybe I'll put a candle on that uh, stack. Now, what I would suggest is with the candles, find a scent that you really love Maybe it's a, uh, maybe you have a signature scent and you're just going to stick with that, but maybe you want to introduce a new scent for the holidays. Um, so find one that you love and buy maybe three, maybe even five candles in this scent. And then you can have them in different spots throughout the house and they're not competing with each other. You know, mm-hmm. you don't want to walk into the kitchen and be like, oh, Oh, it smells like apple pie. And then you know, walk out into the living room and it smells like a pine tree. You know, you really want to have the one scent throughout the house. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not a bad idea. And I love the idea of just putting just a few simple things on the living room table. And speaking of something simple, if you have a big dough bowl or a trough like I do, uh, it's so simple each holiday to just fill it with something kind of representative of the holiday. So for a dough bowl at Christmas time, it's pretty simple to fill it with some greens, faux or real, and then just throw some ornaments on top or some pine cones. Uh, You can go all natural or you can go faux. I mean, I love to put the greens in there and then put in some mercury glass ornaments, uh, some mercury glass uh, pine cones or that sort of thing. And it's just so pretty to have sitting out. That just sounds so nice. And, you know, it made me, it makes me think also of more European type Christmases. I think that this lighter approach is a much more European type approach um, rather than so completely over the top. Um, and it's just, just to think about the smell of the greens and even, even if you go faux, that's fine. You could have a scented candle, Um, but it's just so simple. And the mercury glass along with the greens is such a lovely idea. I think too, The secret to making it look classic, the secret to making this simple is to have just a few key elements that maybe you mix up every year, but they're classic. You keep them from year to year and maybe use them in a little different way. So have maybe mercury glass ornaments, bottle brush trees, then you're going to use the real fresh stuff, pine cones, greenery, and uh, candles, maybe some other ornaments, and then you're just going to be mixing them up different places. I don't think this is a situation 
uh, where you're going to have to go. I mean, I think that's part of what makes it so stressful too, is people feeling like they have to go buy all new stuff every year or refresh. And I think if you have good classic pieces, kind of like a capsule wardrobe, if you have some solid pieces that work together, that's all you need. Capsule Christmas a, decor. There you go. You're onto something there, sister. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. That's a great idea. It's so true. You could maybe this year, if you haven't gone this road, route before and you want to try it, maybe you create a bin that is your capsule Christmas decor bin. And maybe next year, that's the only one you take out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? uh, yep. And, and then get rid of the other ones. Right. <laughs> because if you, maybe you're not ready this year to get rid of the other ones. Mm-hmm. Um, I know I've been holding on to some things. And this year, it's going to be the time. Last year, I got rid of a lot of other things. Um, and I will be donating it early enough that somebody else can use it this year rather than oh, waiting for I've January. got to get that faux tree out of my attic that I'm giving away. Oh, got uh, to go? Want to do that now? Well, <laughs> well, there's an extra one. Yeah, I got to go. Are we done? Sorry. <laughs> got to roll. Okay. So now we talked about these various areas and oh, I think I didn't mention my idea for the mantle. Okay. So the mantle I would just put a garland over it. I would put um, either fresh or faux. As we were saying, I have a faux one. I don't love it. So maybe that's one of the things I'm going to give away this year because they're hard to store. You know, it's kind of like yes. curling it up and it's this giant sort of boa constrictor. And then, you know, you take it out and you like fluffed it and it's still like, and then the cord's coming down. Like it still looks fake. So I think yeah. what I'll do is do real and then just tuck in small mercury glass votive candles. I got a bunch of them on sale someplace um, off season uh, last year. And I think that um, I'll just put a whole bunch of them and tuck them in. So it'll almost look like it's um, lighting up, Mm -hmm. you know, but then I won't have the wire. Don't like the wire. Yeah. yeah, Right. Okay. So then the other thing you can do in your kitchen or in your powder room, or, you know, if you wanted to carry it into your bedroom. No, I thought this was light. This is beginning to sound like a lot of work to me. No, no. Here's the thing. You just clip some things from your garden, right? So okay. say like where right. I have my white pitchers in my kitchen, which are there, mm-hmm. you know, 365 days a year. So True. what I do every year is one of them, I fill with water and I put some greens in there. Bam, done. Uh, maybe my hutch, instead of tucking in the baby boo that I might have done, which I didn't even get to <laughs> around a Halloween and Thanksgiving, maybe I tuck a sprig of boxwood, you know, behind something or put an ornament in one of the teacups, something like that. Really simple and mm-hmm. unnecessary, but you could do it if you wanted to. Or again, add another cyclamen or another Christmas type of potted plant in your room. Another thing that I keep year to year, and I bought these several years ago, what a wonderful investment. And it is an investment because these aren't cheap. And that is to buy preserved boxwood reeds. Oh, I love them. I know. And you know, the one that I think I never bought, but I just had the crush on was the square one. Yeah. I don't, well, I don't know. You didn't tell me you bought it. No, I don't think I I don't think I have one. But I have the little small ones and yeah. a couple of big ones. Mm-hmm. And they're great to just hang on a mirror in your house or anywhere else. I keep one up year round uh, above my stove up on the, the hood, the vent hood way up high. Yeah, I have the year round one mm-hmm. in my entryway. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. Yeah, and so last year I was going to put round. a bow on it. And I was like, nah, I'm, first of all, I don't want to mess with it. It's very happy mm-hmm. there. And it doesn't really need anything. No, no, I've just kind of wrapped a ribbon around mine mm-hmm. that I change out sometimes to hang when I hang it on a mirror or something, but uh, it really doesn't need anything else. Uh, and there's again, classic, classic. They're always beautiful. They're always in style. Uh, so you buy one and it's going to look great for, for just take care of it when you're storing it and you'll be, it'll, you'll be golden for years. Yeah. I think that's a really great thing to have. And it's, it just brings a bit of organic into any room all year round. But yeah, when, once it's then mixed in with some other very simple Christmas decor, sort of like it seems to pop out a little bit more even mm-hmm. because yeah. of the greens. So I, yeah, I think that it's really a nice way to approach Christmas decor, especially if 
I mean, for everyone, but I was going to say, especially if you're traveling, like, oh, and then you come home and you don't even have the time to enjoy it. If you're going to go have Christmas someplace else, and you know, if you have little kids, sure, you might go a little crazier with maybe the tree, but that's the tree, I think is a really almost a separate issue because everybody has their own traditions uh, with the tree um, and how they like to approach that. But Going this way with the rest of the decor and simplifying that and paring it down gives you more time to spend with the tree Mm -hmm. and create traditions around decorating your tree, which I think is just really, really special, whether people want to participate or not. (laughs) I think it's nice to just do it, you know, and you take the time and you put the the Christmas music on and you make a cup of tea or something. And it's such a lovely way to spend the afternoon, but not if you're running around like crazy woman with, uh, you know, all these other things going on. Right. And I think another way to make it an enjoyable experience is to kind of make the whole decorating a family affair and you're making it a fun thing. We usually get hot cocoa or something, turn Christmas music on and work on the tree together. And then when the tree is done, then everyone scatters and I'm left holding the bag. (laughs) At least I can help yeah, yeah, for that. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't even get to the part where the tree is done. Laura likes to work on the tree, and Peter will help mm-hmm. in the beginning, and then we always have him put the angel on the top, which is yeah, an angel that we got when we it was our first Christmas Aww. together. So it's mm-hmm. the same angel goes on the top every year. So he does that. Um, but yeah, that's about it. That's mm-hmm. about it as far as, far as participation. But um, I would suggest. And I wonder how you think about this, Anita. Would you have your other Christmas light decor done already before the trees began? Uh, I don't know. I usually just do it all the same day. Mm-hmm. So I don't really, again, it. <laughs> I'm done pretty quickly. Yeah, like, hey, that was 25 minutes. I'm I, done. Yeah, unless I'm out and I just see something I just adore later that I want to buy to add to it. But right. usually, right. yeah, I mean, just that day. So I don't know. I think you can do it however you want. Well, I think the takeaway from this uh, episode is really this Christmas capsule decor. I love that idea. Oh, yeah. yeah and it's I actually our it. follow-up uh, episode that, that'll be coming out uh, next week is, uh, you know, our favorite holiday decor and sources. So, you know, that fits right in there. It ties in really well. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, I, that's all I've got. Well, I think you've got a crush for us. Oh, yes. If we're on to crushes. So I found a new podcast. It's not actually a new podcast, but new to me. Mm -hmm. I love history and I love biographies and hearing about historic women. And so this podcast is right up my alley. It's called the History Chicks Podcast. Have you heard of it? No. Well, they cover all these historic figures and mostly women. They do their research and then they kind of throw in a lot of, you know, their opinions and thoughts on it. So it's very interesting. It doesn't feel dry at all. Uh-huh. I mean, they kind of uh, just add a lot of uh, interesting chit chat. I mean, I shouldn't call it chit chat, but just interesting conversations about these historic figures and what they found maybe odd or funny about them and, you know, what actually happened. And they often go back to the parents. So and then it's so interesting how these characters are linked because they were covering um Isabella, Fernand and Isabel, mm-hmm. Isabella, and their daughter, Catherine of Aragon, then married Henry VIII. So, oh, I mean, she had a rough these... time of it. Oh, Catherine. Yes, she did. So anyway, all these, it's so interesting how all these characters are connected, but I, I love that it's really a good podcast. And they, I listened to the one on Joan of Arc recently because I had forgotten some of the details about that. So that was so interesting. Oh, wow. Too. So, yeah. So, it's a really so good it podcast. Two women doing it? It is two women. So, it kind of reminds me of, you know, us talking together about this, which I love the dynamic of two hosts that are together. And so, they have this relationship and uh, just kind of a sense of each other. So, it's a really good conversation. And they, the, 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 the hosts are Beckett Graham and Susan Vollen Weeder. I'm probably mispronounced that one, but. Yes, yeah, Susan and Beckett, they're very, they're, they do a great job with the podcast. Oh, awesome. Okay. Well, I'm definitely going to check it out and we'll have the link in the show notes for everybody else. Oh, so speaking of podcasts, we have mm-hmm. to tell you that uh, we were invited to speak at the Digital Hollywood um, conference that was just held. And this was the first year that they did a podcasting forum. So Digital Hollywood is a conference for uh 
industry professionals and um, producers and directors and people that are into uh, the streaming services and all that. So a lot of digital content, obviously, from the name. And then they decided to have a podcasting forum this year because podcasting is so hot and um, decorating tips and tricks. Anita and I were invited to speak there. Now, Anita was just back from London. So she couldn't fly uh, to California to be with me. So I had to talk by myself. Could you imagine? I don't know. <laughs> it was I very think hard. I, t- I knew you could do it. Well, I still don't know because it was it was taped, but I didn't get to see the tape. Anita was watching it live. I so. got to see it live. It was great. I'm, I hope we get to share it. I hope you get the link so that we can share this in the future. You did a great job. Well, and it was well very interesting. I'm not going to tell you whether we're getting so the link or not. I'm a little worried. You may have figured out you don't need me to talk to. <laughs> no, no, no. It was <laughs> it was really difficult, uh, everybody, to 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 carry on a show without Anita. They kind of wanted just to showcase some podcasts that they had invited. To, and it was really sort of entertaining, just or supposed to be entertaining, I should say, um, and letting people know just a little idea about what some of these shows are about. So it was a wide range of different kinds of shows. And um, so I did a sort of a mini episode. We had to speak for 20 minutes and we were filmed on three different cameras. So it was a little unnerving and I had a big microphone I had to hold and everything. So I was very nervous. Uh, but it, I think, I don't know. Everybody was very nice. Let's just say I couldn't really tell what I was saying. <laughs> but I thought <laughs> you were great. I you wanted great. to share with all of you that we had been invited because it really was a, a very um, nice thing for us to be. But uh, I, but chosen. I get that. But when, because when you're used to doing the banter, then it's hard to go back to just talking by yourself because you're wanting. And then I know when you were recording, you were in a room where there really they didn't have an aud- space for there to be an audience. No, it was just a, a, a cordoned off area. And they just had the three because they were going to be then showing it later on, which I didn't right. stay for because I had to pick up Laura from school, you know? Um, so, so so that's kind of tough. So you've got no one to talk to and no audience to interact with, no feedback. And mm-hmm. that's tough. Yeah. Yeah. It was a little bit. The, the, the guy who was, he was so nice. He was from Texas, actually. Um from San Antonio and he was doing the sound and whatever he uh, other things he was doing. Uh, and I heard him giggle a few times and I thought I thanked him so much at the end because just to hear a little bit, like a mm-hmm. little sound. That's helpful. But, yeah. you know, there was like nothing going on. But anyway, I just wanted to let everybody know that we had been invited there because it was pretty cool uh, and very interesting overall uh, collection of people doing all kinds of different things. I met some other interesting podcasters, so we might be sharing them as we go along in the next few months. Inevitably, with the new year come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add dose to your wellness regime. Dose is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor, and I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pant at forty nine ninety. The price is unbeatable, and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. 
And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with Quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with Quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365-day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365-day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. Mm -hmm. Um, But today we wanted to share something really special as well about one of our longtime listeners. We are so proud of her. So Taryn H. um, from South Africa has been listening to Decorating Tips and Tricks for a long time, probably as long as we've been out. And I think so. Yeah. And Taryn is a pilot. Like she's so super cool. Uh, She has this passion for decorating, kind of like the former engineer and kind of like the former lawyer, right? Mm -hmm, I'm not saying she's a former pilot yet, but... Taryn decided that she was going to take a decorating class. So she she has some kid, little boys and uh, family and whatnot, but she took a decorating class at night. Absolutely loving it. Uh, it went on for quite some time and she learned all kinds of things. And she does say that so much of her inspiration for getting out there and doing it was from listening to decorating tips and tricks. And so she has uh, finished her class and she's already – got her first client. So Aww. we're so proud of her. And so I wanted to give Taryn a shout out. Um, she says at the end of her email, uh, thank you, Kelly Nita, once again for opening such a new and beautiful world to me. What started as listening to an informative podcast to fun conversations, to inspiring changes in my home, to developing a passion, to finding the confidence to go out there and do this. (laughs) So we're so proud of you, Taryn. And we know that you're going to do such an amazing job for your client. Taryn, oh my gosh, I think she was one of our first listener questions. Remember, she was doing her coffee bar yes, downstairs yes, in her house. Yes, Well, and Taryn, we're so proud of yeah. you. We're so excited for you. Yeah. So keep us posted. If anybody else is listening in South Africa and you need a decorator on the spot, then you need to contact Taryn. <laughs> mm-hmm. Exactly. So thanks, everybody, for listening today. We had a lot of fun talking about Christmas light. Let us know uh, via email how you feel about that and how you're doing Christmas this year. And remember, we are here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time.